time. All right, we are recording. So my name is Tom Perrone. Um, I work with Stronghold Training. Uh, we do tons of stuff, but um, one of the things we've been doing a lot of lately is marketing consulting, which has been a ton of fun. I uh, work with a lot of different people, uh, a lot of realtors, a lot of people, a lot of small businesses, entrepreneurs, really helping us to have a lot better advertising, cheaper. Uh, so we're doing a lot of consulting with that. And today's webinar is um, sponsored by and brought to you by Summer's Title. So Joyce has been gracious enough to, to bring this to you guys. So Joyce, why don't you take a minute, tell them why they should work with Summer's Title. You're, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Joyce Smith with Summers Titles Company. And as he said, I think I know all of you um, and most of you on the call, it looks like, um, are currently customers. So um, you all know why you use us. But um, yeah, we just, uh, we've been around the, uh, both the owner and the manager and other employees have, have lots of um, experience in the title industry. Um, opposed to some others uh, that are out there in the industry. And so we've just seen a lot of different types of transactions, different things that can pop up, um, you know, and know how to solve them. So I would say just our experience that really uh, leads to um, um, our knowledge, if you will, I guess, and why you'd want to do business with us. So anyways, hope everyone's staying safe and healthy out there. And hope you enjoy this um, webinar that Tom is willing to be put on for me and my customers. So thank you so much, Joyce Smith, Summer's Title. Awesome, thanks Joyce. You know, if I was a title company, I would have like the worst tagline. I'd be like, Summer's Title, we don't screw it up. You know, Summer's Title, your customers won't hate us, we promise. You know, I'd probably just, that would be my tagline, you know. Um, I, I, I've actually can't come up with a little one um, and so, uh, just kind of started using it a couple months ago. So it says, um, detail, uh, when it comes to closings, details are vital to make sure you choose Summer's title. Be way more clever than anything I would have come up with. I would have been like, closing is stressful. We're, we don't suck as bad as other people. <laughs> this is why I'm not in the title business. I cannot write ad copy for you guys to save my life. Um, all right. So, or summer's title, it doesn't look like we're doing every closing like it's the first time. <laughs> that would be, those would be my taglines. All right, a couple quick housekeeping things. We'll jump right in. So those of you just joining, we are recording. Um, this is a webinar, not a typical Zoom meeting. So you're all automatically muted. If you have a question, you can type it into the Q&A chat. You can go to all panelists and attendees, select that and chat. Everyone will see you there. You can make all your, your, your um, comments there, but questions put into the Q and A. Maybe Joyce, if you monitor the chat a little bit in case someone misses that, let me know. Here's how this is going to work today. This is a quick learn, which means I get to talk fast. I'm caffeinated. I'm going to talk fast. We're going to spend 30 minutes and I'm going to give you a crash course on this. There is no way I could do this justice truly in 30 minutes. The course I do on how to build your own Facebook ad campaign is an eight hour workshop. I have done it in four um, where I walk you through and you follow along with what I'm doing. That would be you building it too. I'm going to skim across the top of the trees today, which I think is going to give you a broader context to start approaching this without making a lot of mistakes folks do when they first start into this. So I, that's my hope. 30 minutes from this moment, so 2.35 or hopefully even by 2.30, I will shut up. And then we have 30 minutes set aside for all your questions. So as I'm going through, load your questions into the Q&A box and then plan to stick around because all I'm going to do is questions from 2.30-ish to, um, to the end of the hour. Um, I'll look at those if I need to take a, a breath. I'll quick look at the Q&A because it might make sense to grab some of those when I'm in the moment. But for the most part, I kind of want to power through this so that you get all that context and then handle questions the rest of the time. Um, perfect. So without further ado, what we're here to do is to help you build your own Facebook ad campaign. Um, if you've never done that before, I am so incredibly excited for you because this is a game changer. Social media advertising 
has been for the longest time, the cheapest form of advertising and the most targeted. So you imagine I send a mailer out. I have no idea really much about the people that get it other than a neighborhood they live in. You can do some demographics mailing, but I don't know who opened their mailbox, took that out, read it, threw it away, didn't read it, threw it away, read it, kept it. I don't know anything unless they take an action uh, that, that triggers a response to me. And it's way more expensive to send a mailer. And by the way, I'm all for mailers. I send them myself. My point is social media advertising is cheaper, more targeted. I know exactly what people do. I get all those big brother tools. I know what they're doing. I can retarget them. And here's the thing. If you're new to this and you're like, I'm scared I'm going to waste a lot of money. Social media advertising is at an all-time low in pricing. It was already cheap. But I'm talking a shoestring budget, 100 bucks a month, you can learn this and have an audience that you validated and are running retargeting ads to. 100 bucks a month to really just kind of break into this. And I mean, I've got clients that are spending, of course, well more than that because they've already proven a return on investment. They're really doubling down or 10 times in down. But to start off, I tell people, you got a hundred bucks to blow. You can learn how to do this and substantiate an audience, probably a hundred bucks. You got a thousand, even better. What most of us do is we go give an ad agency a thousand bucks and then a thousand bucks on top of that for several months. And that can become very, very costly. Also, many of you are spending money on people who are just running social media content for you. And hey, that's great. Love social media content. But what I'm here to do is to help you figure out how to have a campaign that actually generates leads. Uh, content's wonderful and you can pay some kid 350 bucks a month to just post a bunch of articles on your Facebook page, but that doesn't typically convert as much as a targeted ad to a select group with a lead generating um, as the strategy. So that's what I wanna help you to start to understand how to do today. Before we really dive into the tactical, let me show you what to click and how to build it, let me just dispense with a couple of, of fears some of you may have. Some of you may be sitting here going, do I really have to have social media content and ads going? We kind of think that's what the Joneses are doing. I need to do it. Everyone's doing it. And I would say not necessarily. Um, there's really about three tiers of um, or three levels of um, social media presence. And you just have to decide which one works for you. Uh, level one is just to have a presence. And that means you have a Facebook business page, not just a personal account. Um, Facebook has kind of become the new yellow pages. I, mean, I used to work for the yellow pages. That may age me a bit, but I used to do sales for the yellow pages uh, back in the GTE days, if you remember that. And so, um, you know, you had to have a white page listing. You had to have a yellow page listing if you were a business. We don't have to have that anymore. But you do have to have a Facebook business page. It's just kind of an address. Even if you don't do anything with it, you want to have that with a picture and, and to, to at least be able to have that presence. That would be level one. And if you've built your business by networking and referral selling and cold calling and all that great stuff that really works, you don't have to do this. If you're getting enough business from those other things, just have a Facebook business page so people can find you there and validate that you exist there, find your phone number there, stuff like that. Level two would be engagement. That's those people that are on there putting on content. Unfortunately, it's oftentimes the black hole of uh, social media because we spend hours there where we'd be better off making phone calls to our customers. We spend hours just linking articles or searching content or scrolling news feeds or posting junk all over our page thinking one day this magic formula is gonna work and people are gonna call me and they don't. Um, if you spend five or six hours in social media content engagement a week and you don't get any leads from that, imagine what six hours of networking or phone calls to people you know or networking lunches would have done for you. So engagement, um, it's there. It's level two. There is a way to do it that works. You know, influencers use this. People that are trying to build their personal brand uh, have to do that type of stuff. That's a specific ad strategy. But for those of us who just want our phone to ring and have leads, level two is kind of a, usually a trap for us. 
Level three would be the next level then. Um, you may have some social media engagement, but you're really focused on targeted ads that bring in the business. And that's really what you want. So real quick, just to review that, and we'll dive into how to be level three. Level one, Facebook business page. If you're in real estate, you would post your listings there because that looks good for your sellers to see that. You would post your open houses as events because that looks good for your sellers to see that. And maybe occasionally boost those posts uh, locally. That would be it for level one. By the way, if you get plenty of real estate business doing what you're doing and you're like, man, this ad stuff is over my head, this is all you need. You know what I mean? You, why do more? Why, why spend all your time? Don't walk away from what's working, but this would be a minimum. I would say you need to do this. Your sellers are going to expect to see their house online where they can share it with their friends and stuff like that. Again, level two, engagement. That's where people are posting helpful articles, providing tools and resources, which is quality engagement, linking other related pages and events, getting some synergy between you and your strategic partners, and hosting a group having a group or being active in a group. This is, I know I kind of was downplaying level two, but if you do these things I've put here, it really can work for you. Um, if you are, especially, especially if you're an admin of a group uh, that's very active or you're involved in active groups and working with your strategic partners, you can get a lot of synergy on social media this way. If you have helpful tools that people would actually use and engage with. That builds value. But just grabbing a Forbes article and throwing it on your, uh, Facebook page every single day and just filling Facebook with more and more and more stuff doesn't really help. As a matter of fact, Facebook has figured this out. They've changed their algorithm so that Facebook business page content is on the bottom of the stack on your newsfeed. Groups are at the top of the stack and personal pages are in the middle. So um, that's actually good news for we who advertise because we're, people aren't seeing our competitors anymore. Advertisers, by the way, trump the whole deck. We go right to the very top because we've paid to be seen. So that's where we want to get to is advertiser. If you're into this, if you're like, man, I, I like numbers, I like ads, I like social media, I like to be involved, it, I could spend time learning this then man, level three is a lot of fun. But if you're like, I don't like this, it's over my head, do level one. Don't waste time in level two. Go do the stuff you know grows your business. Go to level one, you're good there. Or pay somebody, um, an ad firm to do this for you. But at least learn what I'm teaching you today because there's a lot of horrible ad agencies and marketing agencies out there. Um, and I feel fine saying that because I'm not a marketing agency. I can't sell you marketing. Um, there's a lot of horrible agencies out there that will just take your money and run ads until you give up. And they just don't really understand how it works. And if you understand kind of how it works, it helps you to shop them. So to be a level three advertiser, you don't just have a Facebook business page, but you actually have a Facebook ads account. That's what we're going to use today. You're going to be using targeted lists. If you don't have a list of people you're targeting, then you're going to create them through your Facebook ads and find them. It's called the invisible list. I'm going to show you how to do that. You're also going to continuously retarget people who engage with you. So people who click on your ad, they qualify themselves as being more likely a potential customer of yours. So we're going to keep retargeting them over and over again. That's the beauty and the magic of Facebook advertising. And then we're going to use things like lead magnets. That's like downloading your list or your ebook or your helpful thingamajigger so that you can get that thing and feel, um, build some value and then collect their information so we can continue to retarget them in other ways like emails, which still really work, believe it or not. Emails work really well, just people do them very poorly. And so, you know, your average uh, email open rate is going to be somewhere between 23 and 30%. Your average click-through rate, which is clicking on links, taking the action you wanted them to take is typically less than 2%. If that's what you're getting, well, you're getting an average amount. It's actually not terrible. Uh, but people who do it well typically see 70% open rates and 30 to 40% click-through rate, which is what we want you to have. All right, a couple critical points. Number one, before you even dive in and create an ad today, I want you to know your goal. Why are we creating this ad? Leads, how many leads and how much money? Let's, let's get a little scientific. Let's not just jump right into the pool before taking a swimming lesson. What's your goal? Next, who do you wanna reach? 
got to ask this question first. Who's your audience? Who's your audience? Take some notes, draw a little stick figure and say, this is Sally. Sally is my target. Sally likes to do this. Sally goes much money. Make a little, um, it's called an avatar in marketing. Figure out who you're trying to reach. Don't just say as many people as possible. It's not going to get you anywhere but broke. Uh, plan to do it wrong. If anyone comes to you and says they can make an ad that's going to get you leads, run. Because any marketer worth their salt understands that the first ad is a learning experience and we continue to tweak the ad to make it better and better, which I'm going to show you how to do. And the problem with marketing agencies, they're just trying to get your money as they make one ad and let it run. They go, well, I did the job. But that's not good marketing. Good marketing is a, always a learning process of getting the right ad. And if they don't prepare you for that up front, then they're not a good marketing agency. And then you got to give it time. It's going to take at least 30, 60, 90 days to have an ad that you can depend uh, on working. Um, I've got ads that work. I just keep them running, get leads from them. It's wonderful. Took me a while to get that lead there. Took me a while to get that audience figured out. Took me a while to make the little tweaks till that happened. Once it happens, it's worth it. Pour the money in, man. Things generating leads. I had a client in my private client group uh, just this past week said, I had to turn down how much money I was putting in. I couldn't handle all the leads. I love hearing that. I also told her, stop <laughs> doing that and send, sell those leads to somebody. But that's, that's what you want to get to. You're not going to make one ad that does that right away. All right. So just be ready. That's why I said, spend a hundred bucks to figure out your ad. That's nothing. All right. We are already 15 minutes in. Now let's get to how you do it. Okay, so I'm gonna end this here and I'm gonna share my whole screen. Always so scary when you share your desktop. What's he have open? What's he doing? All right, and I'm gonna go into Facebook Ads Manager. You can see an Ads Manager account there. Now, if you're like, how did he get there? Well, if you go to your Facebook business page, um, this is the long way, but it's the way people remember. If you go to your Facebook business page, okay, and you go up here to Ad Center, click on that. It's going to pull up a whole bunch of stuff. Click on All Ads. I am recording this, so you, you'll get the recording, so you can go back through and follow this. If you're taking scrambling to take notes, don't worry. Scroll all the way to the bottom and click Ads Manager. This, guys, is not the same as boosting an ad. Some of you go, well, I do ads. Yeah, I go in, I click boost. Goes out there. Hey, are you hearing me okay, Joyce? Sometimes with my microphone. Okay. Um, sometimes people go, I boost ads. I do that stuff. I'm boosting posts. Technically, it's an ad. But guys, it's not. It's not really an ad. It's a boosted post. Facebook views it differently. They're simple to make they're really difficult to turn profitable because they're really not um, the, where, the, where the good stuff is at. You really need to get into your Facebook ads manager and see it looks complicated, but I'm gonna make it a little less complicated for you now. So as you look at your Facebook ads manager, which as long as you have a business page, then you can have one of these. When you go to put in your credit card, it may cause, it may ask you to create a business manager account. Just follow the prompts, make your business manager account. This is Ads Manager. If I had more time, I'd go into all the details on that. Facebook has excellent tutorials to help you set this up. If you have a Facebook business page and you go to Ads Manager, you have one already. You just follow the prompts I had before, it'll bring you right here. You already have one. So what you do here, okay, is you, you have a bunch of tabs. You've got an account overview tab. It's gonna default to the campaigns tab. You've got ad sets and you've got ads. This overwhelms people and it doesn't need to. This is all you need to know. Campaigns are the type, the type of ad you are running. Ad sets are within the campaign. That's why the file folder is behind it. It's within the campaign. That's your audience and your budget. And then ads is the actual ads, the pretty picture and the words that get people to click or the video, okay? So you're gonna understand this a lot more because we're gonna create one. So I'm right here on campaigns. And I'm gonna click create. First thing it's gonna ask is what type of campaign do you wanna create? Again, that's all the campaign is, is the type of lead and depending on the type of ad. 
And depending on which one of these you choose, you will get different options that you can run. And the Facebook algorithm, which is the secret Facebook computer that decides what they do with your ad, that will determine how it operates based here. Um, I could spend time going through every single one of these and just overwhelm you, but I'm just going to tell you the two that I suggest if you're new to this, you should be using. So if you're primarily targeting people who don't know you, it's called a cold audience, otherwise known as a stranger. If you're targeting strangers, what you're going to want to do is lead generation, makes sense, right? Or conversions. Don't run traffic ads. Don't run brand awareness ads. Don't run reach ads. Stop running ads to get people to like your Facebook page. Doesn't matter how many likes you have. Not going to help you. All right. It just doesn't. Instagram, it matters, but it's just not going to matter here. So if you're running, if you're spending money to get people to like your page, you're probably actually hurting yourself because the only people we want to ever like your Facebook page are customers. So if your grandma is liking your Facebook page and all your friends and all your networking buddies, if they're not going to lead you to your ideal customer, we're actually building a demographic of customers that aren't our customers. It's actually not helpful. So again, Facebook uh, algorithm has changed. We just need to, we're gonna, we're gonna pick who Facebook shows this to. So the likes don't matter, all right? So the difference between a conversion ad right here and a lead generation ad is the lead generation ad has a form, a form that pops up. So when someone clicks on it, a form pops up, Facebook auto populates their information and co can collect information from them. So like, let's say your ad is, you know, hey, if you want a free consultation with me, um, give me a call. That's actually not that great. What would be better is for a free consultation, click here. And when they click, it pops up a form. Facebook knows their information, it auto populates it and they just click submit. You'll get a lot more leads that way. The lead generating ad allows that to happen, all right? Even if they click it open and don't hit submit, Facebook remembers who they are. It won't tell you their name and information like that, but it will allow you to retarget them. And they've already taken an action to qualify themselves. And so that's awesome. Um, conversions, um, is going to send them somewhere else. So in a conversion ad, that's where they click the ad and it goes to your website. Now, I said that the secret computer of Facebook is what decides what happens here. Conversion ads are going to be shown to people who have taken actions based on Facebook ads in the past. So for example, my dad, been on Facebook forever, has never even clicked the like button. He's so nervous that someone's going to get his personal information. So I don't really want him to see my ads. That's a waste of money. So Facebook would never show my ads to my dad, but it would show it to someone who's clicked an ad before and bought something from Facebook or gone to a website and downloaded something. Whereas a traffic ad will show it to anybody. Okay. It'll show it to anybody. So if you want people to take action, then you actually, you actually want your ad to go in front of people who have typically taken action from Facebook. So you can see how that kind of works. So I would say start with lead gen. Start with that lead gen ad. That's what we're going to start with today. All right. Um, actually, you know what? For sake of time, we're going to start with a conversion ad. It's the easiest for you to make because it's going to send them to your website where you probably already have some stuff built. We're going to do a conversion ad. Again, the only difference is the lead gen has a form that pops up. It takes a little bit longer to make. So we have a conversion ad here. Video views is another good one to start with, but you can put a video in your conversion ad, which will accomplish the same thing. So I'll click continue. Now what Facebook's going to do is pop up this helpful little screen here and you'll see over to the left, I've got those three um, tabs that we had on the other page, campaign, ad set, which is audience and budget, and then the actual ad itself. And you can see I'm still in campaign. I've selected the type of campaign, but I'm still there. And I'm just gonna name it something. And we're gonna name this conversion to website or lead magnet. I'll understand, you'll understand what that means here in a second. Now, if you're in real estate or you're a lender, you have to select this next thing, special ad category. You guys are restricted, fair housing laws, stuff like that. And Facebook doesn't want to get in trouble for you. So if you are running ads about credit, employment, housing, or some social issue, election or political issue, you go into a special ad category 
and you might as well just click it because they're going to find out if you're running an ad for those things. What, what's the difference? Unfortunately, if you are a special ad category, you cannot target people in the same way. So I sell training, right? I sell, I have a private client group. I'm a coach, right? People come into my group. I do public speaking training. I'm not selling real estate. So I can target people based on how long they went to college, how much money they make. Like I have awesome things I can target people on and get really specific. Unfortunately, realtors and lenders, you cannot, okay? Is it over for you? Not at all, not at all. Okay, most of my clients are in real estate or have some sort of special ad category. But what you need to do is go ahead and check this box because if you don't, Facebook's gonna reject your ad. They're gonna, matter of fact, I've used um, verbiage in my ads before targeting realtors and they thought I was selling real estate and rejected my ad and I had to have it reviewed and all that stuff. So it's very, very common. So what you're gonna have to do is recognize, it's gonna take you a little longer to build your audience. I'm gonna show you how to do that here real fast because we're running out of time already. But just go ahead and click special ads category and we just have to have a little bit of a different ad strategy to get it done. Um, so realtors, lenders, click ad strategy. Matter of fact, just for kicks today, I'm gonna to click it and I'm gonna click housing. I'm scared to do this because I don't want Facebook to think I'm ever a special ad category, but I will do it for you guys. All right, then I click next, and you'll see here, it's brought me to the ad set. Again, ad set, fancy word for audience and budget. Audience and budget. You can have multiple ad sets within a campaign, and you should. And the reason why you should is because you don't want one giant audience. And that's what people do. They jump in here and they create an audience and they put every possible detail that could ever apply to that audience down here in the, in the demographics or the detailed targeting here. They put in all that stuff. And that's not good guys, because if anyone clicks on that, I don't know what qualified them. If you put in there, you know, they're this tall and weigh this much and do these things and drive these cars and all this stuff. And then one of them clicks it. Well, which one was it? Did they meet all those things or one of those things? So what you actually wanna do when you create ads is just have one specific thing and have a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of audiences. So I'll have an ad, I'll run an ad and I'll put like, like if I'm in real estate, right? I would run an ad targeting people who liked Keller Williams, people who liked Berkshire Hathaway, people who liked, and I would just go through and make a different ad set for each one of those to see which audience actually um, engaged instead of having one giant one. Um, again, if we had more time, I'd get more into the strategies, but I just, I want to show you a little bit how it's done. So you create your ad set here, which is your audience and your budget. So here's your daily budget. While you're determining, trying to get an audience to actually work, guys don't spend more than $2 a day per audience. $2 a day per audience until we have an audience performing. Most people are all worried about getting the ad to perform. I'm actually first worried that I have a good audience. So $2 a day to make sure that these people are even responding is where I start. Then you get into the audience itself. The best thing to do is to upload your own, especially if you're in real estate or lending. So take Joyce, for example, I'm sure she's got an awesome Excel spreadsheet with all of your names on it. <laughs> Joyce, you can take that awesome spreadsheet, come right here to create new, custom audience, and upload a customer list, a CSV file. And you know what's so awesome about that? If you have email addresses on there, Facebook will find them. And now we can have a list of only 150 people we're advertising to, or most of you have tried building a Facebook ad before, you've had like a million people that were potentially in your audience and you had to spend all this money to reach like 100 people a day. Forget that, upload your list of 500 contacts, advertise just to them for $3 a day. You'll reach them all. Facebook's good at this. So uploading a customer list is a great way to start. You can also retarget people here. So if you've had videos, you run videos, you can select a video as your source and just target people who have watched your videos and you can choose how much they watched your video. So if you make an eight minute video and someone watches four minutes of you talking about what you do for a living for more than four minutes, they're either your mom or probably a potential customer and you can retarget those people that's awesome because that saves you money. So retargeting videos, retargeting people who've been to your Facebook page. These are excellent ways 
to build an audience cheap. All right. But if you got to do it for the first time, then we got to create an audience. So we're going to create a new audience. We're going to call it, um, well, we're going to call it Tony Robbins. You know, people who like Tony Robbins typically like what I do. So I'm going to create a new audience. I didn't type it in the right spot. I'm going to go down here to detailed targeting. Tony Robbins, that's a special ad category. Might not let Tony work. Not let Tony work. So I'm going to browse. I get interests. See, special ad category really limits me. So I'm going to look for people, we'll make this real estate related. I'm going to look for people who are interested in apartment guide. All right, they're interested in an apartment guide. And I'm going to run an ad to try to turn renters to owners. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and just name this ad set apartment guide. $2 a day. We're not going to go to the US. We're going to go to Pinellas County. 7,500 people. That's, that's a good list. Okay. 18 to 65. Can't change that. Why? Special ad category. <laughs> Fair housing. All right. And we're going to click next. Now we've got an ad set called apartment guide. I can go back in and create five more of those, picking each one and finding out which audience actually responds. Now we actually create the ad. And I know I'm already over the 30 minutes. So in my few bonus minutes here, let me show you how you actually create the ad. So we're going to call it lease to own. Now you can use a post from your social media page from your business page. You can just take one of those posts and turn it into an ad that's use existing post, or you can create a fresh one and, and it will not go to your page. So the only people that will see this are the people that you're targeting. So I work with a lot of brokers who do a lot of recruiting and they don't want to be posting on their Facebook business page for their brokerage that they're recruiting agents, right? Their agents don't appreciate that. So they just run targeted ads from their ads manager. It never shows on their page. They just create a fresh ad here. Uh, so you can go in and add media. That means an image or a video. You could run a video here and retarget people who watch that video, right? But we can just add an image. You can select images. So I'm just going to select this image here of a, happy person. So there's an image that comes up and then you select the text and you just type in what you say now. Rent to own is the only way to go. A little headline here. Rent can be an investment. Learn how. And then I link that to my website. So if someone clicks learn how, it will take them to my page. And then of course you would have a little page there with maybe a little video that explains uh, this, gives them what they need, scratches the itch. And then for more, they could fill out a contact form or call you. That would be an example of a proper conversion ad. The difference between this and a lead ad is the form itself would pop up right in Facebook and you would just have to create that form. And then you click publish and you give Facebook some time to run their computer scan, usually a couple hours to decide if they're gonna reject your ad. And guys, many ads are rejected. Many ads are rejected. Just get used to it, especially if you're in a special ad category, you just ask them to review it. Um, and then you, you'll learn. That's why don't go in and create all those audiences until you've got one approved. So you don't want them to disapprove 10 different audiences. Um, just run one, get it approved, then go in and add your other ad sets. But that is simply how you do it. I'm going to save this of course. I'm recording this so you can go back through and follow this step by step. You'll notice I skipped a lot of options in here. You know why? They don't matter. If you do what I just said right there, you've done enough to create your ad campaign. Don't worry about all these millions of options in here. Most of them, there's whatever they're selected to and default is fine. Um, there's a lot of other fancy tricks and lots of stuff you can get into with this, but what you need to do is get an audience being tested and an ad being tested against that audience and start looking at its performance to understand what's working. And there's a lot we could say about that too, about you know what's a good performing ad and what's not. But what we know we're trying to get here is someone to click 
and someone to call us. So take some time to see if these ads are even being clicked on. And it's real easy to do. You just come right here, back to the main screen, and you can click on performance and clicks in this column and it'll tell you. And I knew we were gonna be having this today and I didn't have a lot of ads running earlier. So I, um, I started running a couple of ads. Delete that one real quick. I started running a couple of ads just so you guys would have something to see. So I ran a conversion ad um, right here. Just started running it a couple days ago. And it's been served up to 1,826 people. My cost per impressions, that means a thousand people see it, is under $2, which is what I shoot for. I've had five link clicks. That's good because guess what happens when they click on this? It sends them to a page with a video that they have to put in their email address and name to be able to watch the video. So I've had five people go to the video and then my website tells me how many people have put in their email address to look at that video. Um, so five clicks to a video, that's a 30 minute pretty much sales presentation. That's pretty good. You know, I've only spent uh, 71 cents to get someone to watch, potentially watch 31, a 30 minute video sales presentation. I think I've had like two people, once they get there, be willing to put in their email address. So for a couple of bucks, I got a couple of, um, a couple of presentations put out there. It's pretty cheap. And I know who those people are now. I can retarget them. I don't know their name. So if they filled out, they did on my website, I do have their name. I can actually start emailing them, which is awesome. So that's an example of how this works. Hopefully that's a good introduction. You can go back through and watch this and go through step-by-step step and do that. I'm sure you're gonna have some questions. So let's get into the Q&A, but I'll pause, take a sip of coffee, and let Joyce talk. Okay, Tom, thank you. Um, so yeah, the first question, whoops, is, um, so I guess what is, they said, what is the way to add an MLS listing? Uh, you would just link it right into your ad. So there are some rules around some of that stuff that you'll want to go in and just make sure you read in detail all your MLS advertising guidelines. Um, sometimes those things surprise me, what you guys can and can't do. But um, the best way to do it is to just go in and you can just link that stuff. Now, Ideally, we want to link them back to you. So ideally, you're going to have your listings on your Facebook business page or um, on your website. I mean, almost every broker offers your listings to be hosted on your website with details there and a contact form. And I would much rather you posted that than to another site where we don't know what they're doing there. Um, so that would be that would be preferred, and then usually your your broker is probably following all the rules they need to to make sure that they are they're linking that stuff. And of course, it has to be your listing; it can't be someone else's. And that's the only question I see in the Q and A and or in the chat. All right. Well, let's get your questions in now, guys. I know that went fast, and it's impossible to go through that fast and how to show you how to do this without a few questions. Um, and on what to do. And I'm curious to you guys, and uh, just we have some time now, I'd like to ask you, where are you at with this? Are you level one, level two, or level three advertisers? You can put that in the chat, level one, level two, or level three. Um, or are you already, are you running ads? Are you successfully running ads? Maybe go in there and let us know what level you're at. And I can speak a little bit to that and how to bring you to the level you should be. Never lets me see the chat once I'm sharing my screen. Let me stop share. There we go. So level one, I've um, got one person asking here, what's a, what's a budget to plan? What I would do at first is, and this is where I think a lot of people go wrong. The first thing you need is, a, is to understand, is to get a good audience. You need an audience that's being engaged with by these ads. So if you have a list, I want to get your list up, uploaded and I want to start running some ads to them and see how they respond because they're probably a warm audience. And if they won't respond, then a cold audience probably won't respond to your offer. All right. So you need to ask yourself, what is the goal of my ad? 
And if the goal is to have someone call you, then what we want to do is run an offer. Here's a reason to call me. And we want to make that offer to people who already know you, your list, and see how well that engages uh, before we start building a cold list. The next thing you're going to want to do is ask yourself, what does it take to bring someone from cold to warm? What are things I can help people with? And then we want to run videos or articles or helpful things like that that are in the form of ads to actually get people to begin to be familiar with us and to trust us and then retarget those people with offers. That's what you actually want to do. Um, a good budget for that, I would say take a hundred bucks to start figuring out how to make these ads and how to um, start developing a list that's engaging just to play with some hundred dollars play money. And once you've kind of figured out some of this techie stuff, then I would um, say your ad budget is going to be based upon the lifetime um, value of a customer. Uh, so there's not a one size fits all in ad budgets. And I hate ad agencies that tell you that bring a thousand bucks and we'll get it done. That's absolutely ludicrous. Um, my typical cu customer, um, corporate client customer, not entrepreneurial customer, my typical corporate client customer is worth about $40,000 a year to me. So I'm happy to spend $30,000 to acquire a $40,000 customer. I make $10,000 in that arrangement. It's excellent, right? But most people don't go, I'm gonna have a $30,000 ad budget, right? And I didn't at first either. I said, I'm gonna have a $2,000 a month ad budget. And that wasn't wise. I blew the $2,000, went back to my marketing company and said, you guys are wasting my money. You know, then I went and did my own ad, um, spent a, a lot more money, but got somebody and realized, hey, this was actually worth it. And so um, a couple hundred bucks to start, kind of inch your way up to that thousand a month to kind of learn this. That's kind of your education and advertising money. And then you want to figure out what it costs to acquire a customer and your budget is going to be something less than that. Or what a customer is worth to you and your budget will be less than that. If that makes sense. So a lot of you are saying level one. Yeah, and it looks like we do have um, another question uh, over in the Q&A. Uh, it reads, if I have 6,000 emails with a location in common, would these be good to add to my Facebook list? Absolutely. Yeah, so um, congrats. 6,000 emails. Um, that's perfect, right? So what we want to do is we want to start advertising to those people right away to find out who's real. We want to think of it like a funnel, right? We want to put that 6,000 to the top of that funnel and start running ads to them that tries to get them to take an action. And anyone who takes any small action, keep retargeting them over and over and over again. Um, and then, so we're going to start to get what's called an engaged list. So out of that 6,000, if you had 60 who were like responding to you, that's gold. That's really gold. And we're going to try to put those people into an email list, stuff like that. If you have 6,000 people, I would start emailing them right away. Money is always in the back end, guys. Um, I'd email, if you had 6,000 people on a list, I'd email them every day. Uh, something helpful. You know, send them something nice. Don't just sell to them. Send them something nice every day. Um, you know, here's a helpful video, this type of stuff. Let all the unsubscribes happen. And so we left with the people that you're actually helping and just make small soft offers to those people over and over again and keep sending them helpful. So 80% of your email is helpful stuff to them and 20% are small offers, coupons, stuff like that for whatever it is you sell. And, um, and then that will get that list really engaged. 6,000 should probably be about 600 um, highly engaged. And then that's really worth something. Now for all you level one people, this might be like way over your head you're two weeks from understanding this. My people, the, the folks I work with my private client group will tell you they felt the same way. You're probably two weeks to 30 days before the lingo and how to create an ad actually works. You just got to kind of get in and do it. Um, but you're probably two or three years from having a, a strong marketing understanding. That said, you don't have to. One of the biggest mistakes level one people make is they think they need to become level three marketers. You don't. I've coined the phrase digital prospector. You only need to be able to know how to run an ad well enough to get leads. Do not let, do not let your Facebook marketing take the place of your sales process. You're a talented person. You sit down with people, you help them and they end up working with you. 
Why on earth would we want to make the internet do that for us? That is the dumbest thing we could do as entrepreneurs. Instead, what we want to do is have more people sit down with us. Hear me on this, guys. All your marketing needs to do is to give people enough reason to sit down with you. Stop selling everybody the end game in your marketing. Just sell them the consultation. Just tickle their appetite, get them to fill out the form, get them to call you, get them to give you your email address, set up a meeting. That's all we got to do. You only need like two ads and you can, that work well to the right audience that you run all the time. That's what I do in my private client group. I, I tell all my, especially the realtors in there. I'm like, guys, why are you running 10 ads? We need like two, two well-tweaked ads that get you five, six phone calls a week then you, that's gravy. You don't have to do all this other garbage you're doing, right? Because once they sit down with you, you're going to close them. So stop selling them the house, sell them the consultation, right? And, um, and that's, that's, that is like a game changer for most people. It's hard though for us in our own business to think that way. It's why when you guys write your own advertising and your own brochures, you fill the page with words. I got to tell them so much. No, 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 no just enough to get them to sit down with you. You just got to let them know, you know, where they're at. You know what they're struggling with. You've been there. The best way to start helping is to start by having a meeting with me. This is what you're going to get out of the meeting. That's all you got to tell them. That's it. And they'll come to the meeting. You'll close them there. You give them more than that. They're going to run. Hopefully that's helpful. Cool. Um, we've got some more in the Q&A. So uh, let's see, how do you put people who have liked your business Facebook list as a list? Yep. Good question. I'll show you real quick. Right, we'll back to that fancy ads manager here, right? I knew I shouldn't have deleted that fake one I made. So hit continue. And so when we're in that ad sets, that's the audience and budget tab. And we went down here to create a new audience, right? And we're in this custom audience, create new custom Facebook page, use Facebook sources, Facebook page, create an audience of people who follow or interacted with your page right there. And then I can pick, I've got so many sites in here. A lot of my clients are like, can I make you an admin of my page and you can tell me if I'm doing it right? <laughs> sure. Um, and then I can look at any, I can send it to anyone who visited my page. They don't even have to like it. See that? Isn't that awesome? Um, anyone who engaged with any post or ad, anyone who clicked a call to action, anyone who sent a message, anyone who saved my page. Typically I run it to visitors. If I'm gonna do this. I run it to visitors in the past like 30 days. And um, name that audience. That's your audience then. That would be a great one to use. If you have, if you're a content guy, if you're a level two person, that's what you want to start doing. Because all that content might not have been converting, but it was building you an invisible list of people that we can now target without them ever having to like anything. Who cares about the likes? Facebook knows they went and looked. The trolls, you can advertise to them. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oops. Let me get, yeah, let me get back to it. Okay, so uh, this is a long one. Um, I'm a non-competitive broker. Right now I am paying a company, but I'm not happy with the content and not getting any response. I would love to start level three on my own for my office. Can I advertise other companies we can partner with in content without their permission? Without or with? Uh, without. Without their permission. Um. Can I advertise other companies we can partner with in content without their permission? Um, probably. <laughs> um, probably. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it, what you can do and what the best, the best thing to do might be two different things, but, and I don't know specifically what you'd be looking at there. Um, chances are you probably can. Um, what I would say, though, for a non-competitive broker is you go into your business manager account. Um, you can reach out to strategic partners. Like, for example, I could reach out to Joyce at the title company and say, hey, Joyce, I'm going to make you um, a member of my business manager page and we're going to run ads together. 
And so we can make, um, we can make a shared um, little uh, ad campaign. And there's lots of stuff like it gets a little techy, but that's basically what marketing companies do. You know, they get access to your stuff and go in and run it from their account, but it's running to your page. So you can do a lot of cool stuff like that. As a non-competing broker, um, you're going to definitely want to be careful that you don't that you're running stuff separate from your page. Uh, the problem is, is it's always going to link back to your page. So just realize that. Um, what I mean is if you're running your own personal ads from your brokerage page for people to call you, you're going to want to make a separate business page for that. I've, I have no brokers who have lost agents over that. So like if you're going to advertise your open house and it goes back to Keller, if you're, if you're the broker at Keller Williams, you know, Deland, and you run your open houses from the Keller William Deland featuring you as the agent, I would run a personal business page where you run it that to that so that you can truly be a non-competing broker. Don't, don't leverage the brokerage beyond what you would be willing to do for anyone else. I'm sure that's obvious. Um, for you level one folks that we probably lost in the first like 15 minutes uh, or the first five minutes of the, the advanced stuff, um, that's actually okay. It's totally okay if you're like, I'm not ready to be level three. Um, but if you're like the last person who asked that question, um, I would say you probably, it's going to be worth you figuring out how to do this on your own. Um, I mean, if I can be a, a peddler of my own services, uh, my private client group would probably be a good place to start learning some of that stuff. But I'm not the only one. Uh, Frank Kern is an excellent uh, guide. I mean, his, I mean, he's my coach for this stuff. So um, he's got a great group as well. Um, there's lots of great courses out there on some of this stuff. It would probably be worth you figuring out, even if you end up using a marketing agency, you need to know what they're doing and be able to speak the lingo, um, because they will rake you over the coals and, and not necessarily intentionally. They're just, they're kind of used to doing it one way and they don't necessarily adapt to your industry. So don't work with marketing companies that aren't very exclusive to what you do and can show you numbers of people just like you and what they've gotten from them and what that cost and how long that took. And what the what's typical, not just their best stories. I figure if I talk a lot, people will put questions in, but they probably put less questions in. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing anything new uh, at this point in either one, either in the chat or Q and A. And just going back to that last one, of course, you're a non-competing broker. So I understand you're really just running the brokerage. You're not running your own ads. So I don't want to miss, I don't want to misrepresent what I'm trying to say there. Um, just even though you are one, my point is, is that sometimes people see stuff that the non-competitive broker is doing and still think that they're a competing broker. That's, that's the issue. I, I want to make sure that you keep the appearance that you're not, even if you aren't. Um, so let me, maybe in the last couple of minutes here, just once, go, you know, go back to those of you level ones that are still listening. Um, let me just share one last time, just for you guys, my screen. I'm going to take you back to my business page. This is what you need to have. You need to have a business page here. It'll say, you know, Patty the Realtor. Um, and you can post things here and then share them to your personal page. Probably your personal Facebook page is where everybody goes because you're a relationship person and they get to know you there and they like you and you know that's where they wanna go and, and that's all great. Um, but what I want you to do is actually post your personal stuff on your personal page, your business stuff to your business page and then share your business page to your personal page. And the reason why is, if anybody clicks on your business page link, I'm going to be able to get that info. That data will be saved by Facebook as a business page engagement. Where if you just post it on your personal page, there's no, there's no linking there. There's, I don't know. I can't advertise. I can't run ads from your personal page. So it doesn't collect any data at all. Also, if people don't want to see your business page posts, but they want to see your personal posts, they can select to stop seeing this page without having to unfriend or unfollow you, which is nice. That allows you to go onto your personal page and say, hey, I post business stuff here. If you don't want to see it, this is what you need to do to not see it. 
and then they can go good because I didn't want to see that anymore. Um, the affiliate marketers, you know, those people that are trying to sell you vitamins and all that kind of stuff, they're notorious for this. They'll go on their personal page and try selling everyone vitamins. So everyone unfollows them, pretty much unfriends them. Where if they just would have had a business page and shared it there, they could have said, hey, if you don't want to see all the candles I'm trying to sell you, this is all you got to do. We can still be friends. The other thing you guys need to make sure you're doing if you're just level one, all right, and you're thinking about going level two, is sit down and post in all this content. You see, I got a lot of content on here. Before you start posting all this content, you've got to ask yourself, what's the point? Am I doing this because I see other people doing it? Why am I going to go post all this content? Well, I'm hoping someone will call me. Okay. That's great. But how are you getting your business now? Are people calling you now because they know you, they like you, they met you at networking, you called them? Do not stop engaging with people in the way that has worked and start doing this instead. Matter of fact, I want you to ramp up the other stuff and start doing this in off selling hours. Start doing the content stuff there. Don't go pay someone, don't go pay a teenager or some agency $300 to $500 a month to start filling your newsfeed with stuff that people aren't gonna look at, all right? You can take that $300 to $500 and do a mailer to people you already wanna meet and do what was working before and be a lot more successful. And I'm telling you, no marketing agency is ever gonna tell you that. That probably got us a couple questions. <laughs> I was gonna say, it looks like we've got another one. Um, how important is begging for likes? Never do it. Likes don't matter. <laughs> Listen, about uh, two years ago, Facebook came out, changed their algorithm, and they said, people, all Facebook cares about is that they don't lose their advertisers. <laughs> I think they care about that. I don't know. I just lost a bunch of them. But um, what Facebook cares about is that people use their platform. What killed MySpace? People stopped using it, right? All Facebook cares about is that people keep using this platform and they don't run off to other platforms. People started leaving Facebook and going to Instagram. What Facebook do? Bought Instagram, right? So that's all fa Facebook cares about is that people use it. That means if, if people are complaining to Facebook saying, we don't want to see all this business stuff all the time. You know what Facebook did two years ago? They stopped people being able to see business page stuff as quickly in the, in the news feed. So you get a thousand likes on your, on your business page. People aren't going to primarily see that. They're still going to see groups and their friends first. So what you need to do is be involved in groups or start your own, right? Have an active group. Um, that would be much better than posting 50 articles that if people, listen, if you post an article every single day on your Facebook page and the people that liked your page don't ever click on it, Facebook goes, these people don't like this business page, stop showing it. So what, what was it good to get that like for, you know? Instead, it would be better to spend that time where you're writing articles and doing all this content stuff to go into groups and actually build real relationships. Facebook loves that, loves that. So, um, so just think about that, guys. You got to ask yourself again, what is my end goal? Is my end goal to build relationships, to get people into my sales process and to actually sit down with me? If so, then let's do the activity that actually does that and stop trying to just look like all these other big companies and what they're doing. Because by the way, it's not working for them either. <laughs> So, all right, hopefully this has been helpful. Joyce, <laughs> um, back to you. Yeah, yeah, this has been great, um, Tom. Uh, yeah, just wonderful. I know, you know, somebody, uh, Tracy put in there, uh, great information, thank you. So, um, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't tell you how you can get more help. If this was over your head, you are going to get a uh, follow-up email from me, which is going to have a 15 minute video attached to it that just walks you through nice and slow how to build that Facebook ad campaign like I already showed you. You're also gonna get a link to a YouTube uh, video with the, this recording. Um, you will also get um, a link to my private client group if you're interested in checking that out. If not, don't worry about it, that's cool too. Not here to sell that to you, but if that's something you wanna explore, this is the type of stuff we do. And anything, uh, Joyce, you would like to include in that as well. We'll get that out to you guys so that you can sit down, listen to this again, or just if you don't want to listen to this again, 
go to the 15 minute video, get the little kind of quick tutorial of how you can build this. And then what I suggest you do is you can definitely send me an email if you get stuck somewhere. You can also go on my website, strongholdtraining.com slash schedule and book a 15 minute appointment with me. I'm always happy to talk to anyone who spent the time listening to me ramble. Happy to spend another 15 minutes with you, getting you unstuck if you're stuck. So uh, if you just want 15 minutes with me, that's free. And I will try to get you unstuck. Um, other than that, I really appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, Joyce. I know it's a lot to take this stuff in this fast. I actually don't mind doing that to some of you though, because I'm going to tell you a lot of you, especially realtors, dive head first into this pool and you get so overwhelmed. And after coaching hundreds of realtors for many years, you would be much better off doing the stuff that you already historically knows grows your business and then putting your toe in the water here first, slowly learning this. But most of you would have a lot more business if you just called more people. And so as your coach, I'm telling you, call people, learn this slow. But once you do learn this, it is kind of awesome. Yeah. And just to actually, um, right on your tails there on that comment. Um, I had heard you speak on this before, I think through the affiliates. And, um, I started to think about that a little bit and I thought, you know, what, what does really get me business? Cause the Facebook thing doesn't work. Um, doesn't seem to work as well. I'm probably not doing it correctly. Um, and I, you know, because I'm stuck in the office, um, I'm making more phone calls and I am getting more success. So kudos to you, um, Tom. I, I have been yeah. following what you've said and it is working. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, the secret in advertising and the secret in selling is one simple thing, have a good offer. We spend so much time trying to sell the end result of working with us, we forget the biggest sale we have to make is to get people simply started to work with us. Think about it this way. Someone calls you up and they go, hey, someone told me you helped them and I'd like to see if you could help me. Sure, come on in, sit down. You know those are lay down sales. They sit down, they go through the process, you discover about them, they learn about you, you end up working together. That's how most of the best sales we ever have happen. So what we wanna do in any form of advertising or selling, whether it's digital, mailer, or in person, is to duplicate that process just bring people to that stage where they start working with you. What we end up doing is sending out mailers and flyers and blah, giving people so much info about all this stuff when all we got to do is give them that little bit to get them to sit down. And as a coach, if I've helped anyone do anything, it's just learning how to make the offer to start the process. You got to sell them the first stage. Hey, if I spend 30 minutes with you in person or if I spend 15 minutes with you on the phone, what am I going to get out of it? Sell them that. And then once they're in that process, trust is built, familiarity is built. You've actually proven you can help them by actually helping them. And then they're much more likely to keep working with you and go down that funnel, that garden path to being a client. So guys, most of you just actually need to back off everything you're doing and just figure out what that offer is to start and then start putting that out to as many people as possible. And one of the fastest ways to do that is over the telephone. Yeah. All right. We're over time. I like okay. to talk. My bad. Hopefully it's helpful. <laughs> okay, you're good. Thanks everyone. Awesome. Thank you guys. Appreciate you very much. See ya. Bye-bye.